Good evening, you're watching ENCA Moneyline, your money guide. My name is Sikim Gabadeli. Coming up on the show tonight, Eskom says it won't allow a blackout, but what impact has it had on domestic and foreign investment in South Africa? High-end retailer Woolworths is making returns on its acquisition of department store David Jones in Australia. And online classifieds see a spike in ads. Is it due to tough economic times? First up though, here are your top stories. High-end retailer Woolworths is making returns on its acquisition of department store David Jones in Australia. Willie's reported a 55% increase in sales over the first half of the year. The retailer snatched up the Australian department store for 23.3 billion rand in July last year and says the group sales would have only grown by 12.5% without the new business. Clothing sales in its home market rose by 9.4%, food by more than 14 and general merchandise went up 8.3% in the 26 weeks to December 28th. Major retailers ShopRite and MassMart also clocked in positive sales results. Well, Eskom says unforeseen circumstances at the Majuba power station have put its finances under pressure. CEO Tsidiso Maduna addressed a media briefing earlier today on the parastatals problems. On the financial side, which uh, there's an interaction between our operational challenges, as I've outlined to you, and our liquidity uh, situation. And the main driver there is that with reduced reserves and requiring this headroom, we've had to use diesel. Um, and I'll come back to this theme because this was a pattern that was triggered by loss of capacity. Um, so the picking plants that use diesel are meant to be used for a very, very limited period. Because there was uh, good thinking behind it, because diesel is, is expensive, and so on and so forth. Um, but in truth, with the constraints that we have, the loss of capacity, loss of full capacity at Majuba, we've had to use more diesel and that has put our financial health under stress. South Africa's power utilities woes are not only jeopardizing the country's economic outlook and potential business prospects, but it has added another added dimension to a whole host of structural, structural problems that continue to weigh on investor confidence. South Africa's electricity crisis has been cited as one of the most critical structural obstacles to the country's growth. Joining us now in our Moneyline studio this evening is economist Azar Jameen. Azar, thank you so much for your time uh, today. Eskom it says it knows what the problem is and it says it knows what the solution to the problem is. Do you believe them? I do believe that uh, they know the problem and I do believe that they know the solution to the problem. Uh, the problem <laughs> is that firstly, uh, even if they really go about it the right way, uh, it's going to take a long, long time to get this thing right. Uh, secondly, they know that uh, uh, what the mistakes uh, were that were made and it's not entirely its fault uh, a lot of it had to do with government actually holding back on allowing them to build power stations yeah. years ago uh, and uh, the the third thing is um, they are very keen to have higher electricity tariffs and they have persisted and uh, here one cannot deny the fact that a year ago they bemoaned the fact that they were not granted higher tariffs yeah. and as a result their financial situation has uh, been worsened and they maintain that our tariffs are lower than most other countries. Yeah. The issue here though that I've got with um, the, the, the latest noises that we're getting from them is in the past, and you're right, they've talked about the need for, for higher tariffs, they've talked about how they were prevented from building new power stations, but surely maintenance is something they should have been doing. Where, this is again where I don't know whether it was ESCOM's fault or whether it was the shareholder, as it's called, yeah. government's mm. uh, 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 instruction 
that they keep the lights on all the time. Mm. And the most, uh, one can understand that for the 2010 FIFA World Cup, but over the past year, uh, there's clearly one senses political uh, pressure on them to make sure that there was no, we were no outages ahead of the general election in May. Now, the concern, of course, is the impact this is having on our economic growth, the impact that this is having on general day-to-day -day, uh, business. Have we done an actual economic impact study? It's extremely difficult to uh, assess exactly how much uh, uh, this is costing. I mean, the general estimate is that it's uh, costing in the region of 1% of GDP growth, but it could be even greater. What concerns me is that it is hitting uh, the areas of the economy that are the biggest uh, employment creators, namely your small businesses. Yeah. They can, can't put up with this. Th many of them will fold as a result of this. Uh, a lot of people, of course, are talking about uh, potential losses of foreign investment. Would you say the domestic investment, um, the decisions that local businesses are making not to invest more in their capacity, is probably a bigger danger? I, I think the bigger danger is precisely domestic investment. And we know for a fact that domestic investment is lagging behind. Uh, businesses are just building up cash piles to make sure that they survive in a very low growth environment. Um, I've been part of a study that has looked at uh, uh, monies owed uh, by businesses and um, it doesn't look that bad. And you ask yourself, why is that, given that the economy is so weak? Yeah. And the, the fact is that they just making sure they're battening down the hatches and saving for a rainy day, which the rainy, it is starting to rain now. Eskom does need money, but would a bailout get them out of this? Well, uh, I think government has to bail them out up to a certain uh, point. Uh, and the question is, where's that money going to come from? And quite obviously, the easiest solution is for sales of some uh, state assets. Yeah. And uh, there are many that one can identify, but then of course this becomes a political problem because there are elements within government itself who don't want to know about this. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. Azai Jameen is an economist. Now, global conflict is more of a threat to the world economy than any other issue, according to the World Economic Forum. Its annual global risks report also cites water security, urbanization and cyber warfare as issues of concern for 2015. The study is a curtain raiser ahead of the World Economic Forum meetings in Davos next week, which President Jacob Zuma will attend along with a ministerial delegation. ENCA's Ali Barrett reports from the launch in London. As coalition airstrikes on Islamic State positions in Iraq and Syria continue, it's conflicts like this which now represent the single greatest threat to the world economy, according to the WEF. The first time in a decade it's put the issue at the top of its list of concerns. But there are plenty of other things to be worried about, according to the report, among them the challenges of urbanisation. Rapid growth, in particular in Africa, estimates are uh, saying that roughly 56% of the African population will live in cities in the year 2050, up from roughly 40% today. The WEF hopes its report will make policymakers worldwide focus on dealing with risks like that and turn them into positives. The report's authors are very clear that risks and opportunities go hand in hand. And for South Africa, Water security may be such an opportunity. Because water security is another of the WEF's top global concerns and an area in which South Africa has expertise, expertise it will be taking to Davos. The report says other challenges Africa must deal with include persistently high unemployment and tackling groups like Boko Haram and the Islamic State. Something different from Al-Qaeda or previous organisations because they didn't really have a home apart from exploiting weak collapsed states. Now we're seeing an attempt to actually build a kind of state with many state-like features in terror terrorist, uh, territories um, uh, that they won through contest and are holding. And that's a, that's a major change. All of these perceived risks are in addition to current volatility in energy markets and concern about economic growth worldwide. 2015 could be tricky to negotiate. Ollie Barrett. London.
After the break, we take a look at measures taken to ensure safety between sellers and buyers on our online classified websites. You're watching ENCA Moneyline, your money guide to stay with us.